the ancient metropolis granted us safety and prosperity. However, our greed bred more greed, and in the end a terrible experiment caused apocalypse. Ratkind, once so great, were scattered into the wilderness. We're the only ones who made new settlements. From now on, we must protect the settlement. Hi guys, today we got Rat Retropolis, which is a um, newer game. It's actually 15 bucks to buy, and it's a really fun game. Um, this playthrough right here is just going to have my best run so far. I did get to the final wave of wave 30, but I did not beat it. So if you're looking to how to beat that, um, I think I could have done it, but I did not do it. So if you're looking for that kind of video, hopefully one day I'll beat it. And I, I do want to do more videos of this game because it is super fun. And here you can actually pick your hero, and that's... The one I picked is the military-minded hero, which is actually probably the easiest. You have four to choose from, there, and there's like four different types of cards. Um, there's two that will be coming out later because this is still in early access. But your green cards that you see on the screen here are the economy cards. And then you have red cards, which are your military cards, which is like your troops that fight the um, oncoming waves. And then you also get building cards which are like one-time use things, but they stay and they have like a long lasting effect. Uh, like your income, your amount of rest that you can have and whatnot. But this game is like Slay the Spire and like Tower Defense. And it is actually super hard. It doesn't start out hard, but to get past wave 20, it is very hard. I've played this game for about six hours and still have not beat it. Like. <laughs> I was trying to get like a playthrough where I actually beat the whole thing, but I could not do it. But I think the military one's the easiest because you can actually like make your troops stronger and kind of spam them because your military cards give you more buffs. I don't know if the game's balanced yet or not because I've really I've played the other um, leaders like once, and the military one just seems to be the easiest for me so far. I'm sure there's ways to beat it with all of them. But I haven't even done it with the military guy yet, so I'm not even going to try the harder ones. For my strategy that I'm trying to do on this playthrough, you basically at the start, the start of the game, your play style is about the same regardless because you start with certain cards. And then this merchant guy will come and you can actually purchase cards to make your army stronger. You don't want to buy a bunch of useless cards though because then that makes your draws like less reliable. But, like I was saying, the military, his passive is if you have like military cards, it actually makes it where you get more rats that you can use. So, more population. And his active ability actually makes like troops that are in your hand stronger. So you want to use that as much as possible when you have like more cards in your hand. Um, also, you don't want to sit on a hand because you want to make sure that your economy cards are keep popping up and you're using them over and over again, especially at the start because you're trying to build a huge army. And I'm sorry if I kind of seem scattered in this because I'm kind of trying to talk about things that come up on the screen. And when you defeat a wave, you do get a treasure chest of varying um, rarity depending on which wave you're on. And you get three choices, like one's build a house, which gives you re more rest to work with and more income or taxes. Um, or you can get like, pick out one out of three cards, you can get gold. Um, you can remove a card from your deck, which seems kind of useless, but you can get negative cards, which are like, like in Slay the Spire, like exhaust. And you can just remove it out of your deck, which is a neat tactic to use. Um, but like I said, the start of the game is not difficult at all. It's actually pretty simple, so you don't have to worry about the beginning too much. You should be able to get past at least wave 15 without too much struggles once you've played it like one or two times. But I'm telling you, 20 is crazy hard. I'll, you'll see what I mean if you watch the video. At like 20 something, they get to like these explosive things, and depending on your build, you might just be completely SOL. Like they might just blow up all your units. Because I tried to do like a. A medic sword warrior or sword a sh shield um, hero type build. So I had a tank and I had people healing him, which was working great. And then they started throwing the firebombs and killed my whole army. It was freaking awful. 
And I'm gonna let you know this R this run right here where I get to the final wave is just like perfect RNG. You also get these things called advisors, which you can see in the top right in that icon. Um, and then they have actually super neat abilities. One can make your like military troops better, or your buildings better, or your economy cards better, or your what's the last type? The skill cards. Um, and those are your four types of cards in the game. I actually get one that makes my Berserker where it, when he's hitting things in his Berserker Rage Mode where some, if something dies next to him, um, he, does more, like, um, he does more damage if something dies near him. And it basically made it where he life still while he's in that state, which is incredibly good. It's pretty much borderline OP, but it still wasn't enough to get me through Wave 30. <laughs> Um, also, you do need to expand. There's a certain building, it's called, um, like, build a wall or something like that, wall, and you need that so you can actually expand your territory. And once you expand, you can get, like, a, the first expansion you get, you get an advisor for free, or two houses. I would advise getting the advisor because they can be super good. The houses are nice, but... I guess it depends on what kind of build you're trying to do. There is a lot of variety in this game. I know it's like still early access, but there's so much stuff you can do. And there's so many cards, so many um, things like that. There's only 30 waves, but I haven't beat it yet. Like I said, it's incredibly hard. Also, if they get to your main base, one hit and it's gone. Like, <laughs> there's not much, if, if they get, basically once you start losing, you've lost. And right there, you see I used the wall thing so I could expand my, um, and there you get your advisor. I got the actual nurse, which can actually heal your units, which is really good for the military guy because your troops will not heal unless you have something to heal them with. So that does make a huge difference. Healing when you're a military person is like super important or you're just gonna be cycling units. And also your um, hero ability, you see how in the bottom left it has level three. You can actually improve that. Like, there's certain things that improve that. That's actually one of the options from the treasure chest. And um, they are pretty good. Like, for this guy in specific, um, it actually makes all your cards in your hand get, like, plus health and plus attack. And it's a pretty decent amount, too. So it's kind of worth using when you can. Sometimes I forget to use it, but... Yeah, it's a, it can definitely be the deciding factor between all your troops dying or not. I do need to advise though that um, when you're playing a, uh, using rage units, I figured they'd just be like super OP, but they miss a lot. Some units have shields, which just make them useless. So you do need to get melee um, troops and actually a good amount of them because there's some people that will make your range people just completely null and void. But. The mobs are pretty cool. They they do have abilities, like I said, which makes the game incredibly hard. Especially the people with the explosive fireball. That's just I think that's bullshit. I hope they don't make it easier though, because if they make it any easier, it's not going to be fun. There we go. That gladiator thing. That is awesome. Get berserker card. Recover lost HP whilst in berserk. This game is a lot of RNG. Um, if you want to beat it there are there's a lot of skill that goes into it to like improve your chances of getting farther but to actually beat it you do need some rng and get like the right advisors the right cards because it varies every time the only thing that doesn't vary is that um at certain part, parts of the game there will be events that happen and uh once the event shows up i'll let you know what it looks like it looks like a little scroll and you kind of have to watch your main place, that building you see there with the clock, because the merchant will come there and the events will happen. And it does let you know in the top left when it does happen, but sometimes you're going to be in the zone, so you just want to check that center place every now and then so you don't forget about it. Alright. And, like I said, you don't want to flood your deck with too many cards because then you won't get the cards you want which is why I put most oh well repair is actually pretty decent because like I said there is no built-in healing there's not like any regeneration or anything like that so you do need like repair and healing people so you can if you get lucky enough to get healing people
But yeah, basically my strategy is once I got that Berserker dude, I'm like, I'm dropping Berserkers. <laughs> Drop them all, baby. Uh, one thing that's pretty cool about the Berserkers, though, I think they stay in their Berserker stance forever when somebody dies. Like, they just wear their mask, or at least they keep their mask on, because with this advisor, whenever they go into their rage mode, they put a mask on, which is kind of cool. I think it's pretty dope. But there, um, like I said, there's a ton of builds you could do. I was kind of curious to play the scientist and just like spam skills, but <laughs> uh, I try to, when I play games like this that are roguelike and it's like very, basically you have to rely on RNG, I try to minimize the RNG if possible. While my, my other friend that plays games like these, he actually goes full RNG and I just, <laughs> it's not for me. But you do need to have an idea of like different types of decks. The more you play, the more ideas you'll have of how to make, which decks will work with what you're given. So that's kind of cool. You do get better at it pretty exponentially, but sometimes you're just kind of screwed. You'll look at your thing and you'll be like, yeah, I ain't getting past like wave 15. The show people are gonna come and they're gonna murder me. And in this game, there's like three different types of like main enemies. There's the rat, uh, the mutated rats. And then you have the um, weasels, and then you have the lizard people. Lizard people are like the finals. And they do have bosses on certain waves. I think there's one coming up soon for wave 10. But for the rats, they're, or the mutated rats, they're not a threat. Basically just like a warm up so you can start setting up your base. Just the power scaling from, oh, okay, so that's an event right there. Um, and that dude, you will get that event all the time. I'm pretty sure he shows up all the time. And I always just, I usually will keep him in prison, which spawns a different event. If you pick certain events, other events will happen, like as a chain reaction, if you choose certain options. Because I keep him in prison, and then all of his buddies get mad that he's in prison. And I'm just like, tough man. <laughs> he's being a jerk. He ran away. Because basically what his event is, is he's like, oh, there's enemies coming, I got away, and he's completely unscathed, and you know he pretty much ran away. <laughs> so I just put him in jail, and he gives all your units like plus two attack that are already on the field. I will warn you that if you, uh, range does matter. If you have like longbow people and you have them on the front lines, like on the front wall, they will not hit crap. They have like a thousand range. So you need to put them behind like the inner wall. If you don't have an outer wall, I wouldn't even get them to be honest with you because they're gonna be like shooting up in the air and missing. But there are a good bit of units and you unlock units kind of like in Slay the Spire when you level up and it's really easy to level up. So if you play it for a, um, one thing I should have checked, but I, I'm not quite sure on, I think um, if you do level them up, the cards are cross-platform. I don't think they're class-specific, but I'm not sure. I could be wrong. It could be like when you level them up, you have to play that hero to get those cards, but I don't think so. Um, from what I was seeing. Which is why maybe I haven't beat the game yet, because I haven't leveled up the other characters to get the other abilities. But I did level up the warrior guy to like full level. And still no, still haven't beat it. But once you like clear certain waves, like wave 20, you get like a big, nice um, event reward. And like every time, like the effects you can choose may be different, but you always get that event reward. Let's see. And this is a nice chest, so that means it was a hard fight. I should have got the cleric here because I really was sleeping on when a card is removed. I was, what I was wondering was after I messed up on this and I didn't click him, I was wondering if that counts like buildings. Because if so, every house I would make would upgrade one of my cards, which would be awesome. But that's another thing of inexperience on my part. The game does slow down when you're using like cards, so that's good. So you're not getting bum rushed while you're like thinking. But it is, it is real time, so there's not like a slow down time slash pause unless you're actually like doing an event or clicking on like a shop or something like that. Oh, 
Also, they do attack from both sides, so you need to keep like both of your sides like pretty even, I would say. Um, sometimes they'll just focus the crap out of one side, though. It is pretty RNG in that way. Like you can't just <laughs> expect them to attack both sides evenly. They will just focus one side sometimes, which is really annoying. Okay, that's the scroll that an event looks like. And that old mouse man will pop up every now and then. And his is pretty random. And sometimes those scrolls give you bad things. Like there was a flood one time. I was like, God dang it. So you are taking a risk when you do click it. But it's worth it overall, I think. If you want to beat the game. Because you have to literally get like a perfect army build to beat the game. From what I was seeing. You'll see what I get when... Oh my god, it's toxic. I'm telling you, this is about as good as it's get. I played this, um... I ran it about... About 10 times. Because each run is about 30 minutes long to get to, like, the end of it. So I played it about 10 times. I still haven't got, um... I still haven't beat it. It's crazy. So, like, the Spire was a lot easier. <laughs> It took me a while to beat the third act of Slay the Spire, but it didn't take me uh, six hours to do it, that's for sure. So if you do play this, if you want to beat it, you're going to be playing it for a bit. And if you like testing things and seeing different builds or seeing how many times you can beat it, if you can get consistent or whatnot, this is going to have a lot of playtime for you. Like I was saying, I want to do multiple videos on this outside of just the soldier one. Like, try the other classes, try different builds, try to beat it, do videos where I beat it with those classes. Um, honestly, I probably wouldn't have done this video until I beat it, but I'm not sure I can beat it, to be honest with you, because this run was just... If I got this exact build again, I could have beat it. But the, the chances of that are astronomically low, because there's so many options you can get. So these are the guys that get mad that you put your butt, their buddy in jail. And both of their events aren't bad for you. Like, I lose half my gold, but then I get plus five to everything I kill. And uh, there was another one. Where you, like, uh, turn them away or something. It's not too bad. They give you, like, a rebel card, which you can get removed just by using a chest. Or There's actually a building called, uh, I think it's a monastery. And it has like 120 seconds, and then it will actually um, let me remove a card from my deck every 120 seconds. Buildings are really good, but they're not good for killing things, sadly. I feel like there's probably some ways to cheese this with the satellite or the scientist, though, because there's some really good skills. You could set like traps and stuff, like explosive barrels and do a billion damage. Another thing with the military strategy, I didn't really talk about this at the start because there's so much stuff going on, but that grain ability you see right there, that's really good to use early or like when you have extra food, it's a good way to build up gold because it does take um, labor in this game, uh, economy labor anyways, it takes a certain amount of your rats, which you can see in the top right of the card. And until that labor gets done, those that amount of rats, which you see in the top left, will be occupied. So say I use one of those cards now, I would have one rat left instead of um, three. And you do use those to make your soldiers, and as long as that soldier is alive, they do count. Um, you will be minus them from your total. But once they die, you can actually make new ones. So it's not like they're gone forever once they die. So yeah, when, uh, the thing with the military guy is you just want to make as much of an army as you can and just keep keep growing it again. But like I was saying, you need strong melee people. Because if you don't have strong melee people there in this area with the mongooses, that's when you'll start realizing that you're getting the smack down. And like Slay the Spire, you can upgrade your cards, except you can only upgrade your card, um, I think it's the same as Slay the Spire, one time. But then you can also use your abilities, and it does stack um, on top of them. 
which is cool. I like when you can stack um, strength. I haven't found something that's like infinitely stacking though that I can put on a character, unfortunately, because I always do like stuff like that. So these are my first two big buildings I buy in this run. The tannery, which means I get plus three gold on everything I kill. And then the monastery, which, like I was saying earlier, lets me remove a card from my deck every 120 seconds. And you want to, like, if you can, if you have space for buildings, you do want to buy them and use them. Because they don't stay in your deck. They're not going to, like, pop up every turn and just waste your draws. Because, like, in Slave the Spire, you only draw so many cards per turn unless you have, like, an ability that affects it. So, that's something to keep in mind. Do, 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 do. The music in this game is pretty good, though. I do enjoy it. That's an, that's something I wish they let you have control of, but it probably make the game a little bit too easy. Is if you could like actually send your melee people forward, so they're not just sitting at the gate getting shot at. That'd be really good. Like that would be super nice. Or if you could just like micro them at all, any kind of like micro, because like they'll just stand and fire and get murdered. And I'm almost well, I'm not there yet, but I'm getting there where you'll see the fire bombs and they just kill everything. But it does, like, this game keeps you busy because you have to keep doing the economy, you have to keep building your units, you have to keep replacing units, you have to keep trying to, like, get better cards. It's a very busy, fast-paced game. You won't even notice that, like, 30 minutes has gone by while you're playing it. It goes by super quick because you're just so busy the whole time. There's not much, like, um, downtime in the game. Honestly, I think it's totally worth the full to me anyways, it's totally worth the $15. If you don't like roguelike games though, oh yeah. I've, and it's still in early access too, so I don't really know what direction it's going to go into. But I really like where they have it so far. I hope they don't like nerf it and make it easier. Unless it's unbeatable. I think they would have tested it and they must have beat it a couple of times before they were to release it. So I hope they don't nerf it. Because I like it when the. If you're like working towards beating something and then they nerf it before you beat it, that's so frustrating. My god. It's one of my biggest pet peeves. But I do like this format a lot better than the turn-based stuff that's in Slay the Spire. Because Slay the Spire, it's just... It gets really bland after a while. This is to actually keeps my interest. Because there's so much going on constantly. Slay the Spire, you have like a lot of downtime between your matches if you want to. And it's this you have to keep going. Which I guess could be a positive or a negative. Because if you're somebody that doesn't just like to sit there and play something just all the way through, um, Slay the Spire is definitely better, but I'd rather play a game all the way through than have to have like downtime in the game. You gotta think on your feet. You can't just like plot everything out. And that's the ability to level up your leader thing, which also reduces the cooldown, which is super good, in my opinion, especially for the military guy. But yeah, I don't know how the other people are supposed to, because I've played them, and I did not get very far with them. Because their units don't get the buffs at the start and everything that makes it so much easier with the military guy for your troops to stay alive. Um, their troops are super weak. Like, the economists and the... The builder, I don't know how you win with those, to be honest with you. I know you can spam stuff, and it makes... I, I can see the perks to them, but I don't know how you're supposed to kill units or get past certain waves. I can see it for the skill guy, though, because he actually has cards that kill things maybe better than military um, does, but... I mean, and the thing is, you're still using the military cards even if you are an economist or like a construction person. So, 
like you still use them but they're not buffed you don't have the buffs anymore and you don't get all the effects of having them out i'm kind of interested to see how those play out when i have a little bit more time with them i just want to beat it with the military guy first and this is the 20 event plus two leader level you get those rebel guards you can remove them from your deck or you can get the thousand gold at this point, I don't think you should be having, like, gold issues if you make it all the way to wave 20, to be honest with you. Um, so you should just be trying to get your deck and army as strong as possible. Another thing is when you can get better range people, I would do that like ASAP because the guards are like three range, which is not good. It's like barely anything. People in your, your melee will be getting hit and your three range people won't be able to hit things. So getting slingshot or the longbowman is definitely worth it. Um, but you really do need to prioritize the melee for like the waves between like 15 to 20 or the show people will screw you. Even for like the 20 through 30, when the lizard people start coming, you still need like really strong melee to finish them off or you're just SOL. Cause the, oh my God, those fire bombs, dude. I can't wait to show you that. It's oh so toxic. <laughs> it's so toxic. But yeah, it looks like this is going like super easy, right? Cause I have like this awesome build. Not even like struggle. These are bullets for people. These are like the final type of mob that you'll face in the game. I did make a few mistakes. Like I should have took the cleric. That would have been really smart, but I didn't. Um, And there's something I'll show you at the end, which literally is the reason why I lost her run, I'm pretty sure. Because you do have to actually move your mice from outpost to outpost. But while I was playing this, I did not know you could actually move them from all the way to the right to the left. So what you need to do on wave 30 to beat it, you need to consolidate your forces because they will, the boss will come from one side if you consolidate your forces. And if you get to wave 30, you should probably win. But I didn't know you could consolidate your forces like that, which is why I inevitably lose this. Another thing is with the buildings, once their ability comes up, you do have to click them. So that keeps you engaged in that too. Because if you're not, you're just basically wasting them. That's a fire trap, man. That will literally kill your whole army. You see all those people dying? The berserkers can live because they have like the life still. But oh my god, it kills everything. It is so... The berserkers are the only unit I've seen that can actually survive it with that upgrade. Um, that less them life still while they're in their berserker stance. All the units I've seen that can survive it. There might be a strategy where you have longbowmen and you just have enough that they like kill them before they get to you. But usually if I get the longbowmen, I don't get past the start because I start building them too soon. I think they're more of a late game unit. And you know what is disappointing? Those armored knights, they're like one of the better units you're supposed to be getting as a military person. And they do stun when they hit, but they hit so slow. Oh my god. They're just like meat shields. If you had, um, they probably work really good with medics. But medics get destroyed by the firebombs. Oh my goodness gracious, dude. But yeah, I think, uh, I really wish you had micro so you can micro out of the firebomb, but you do not, unfortunately. But, uh... Yeah, I actually thought the Armored Knights were good, and that was a mistake. <laughs> mistake on my part. Yeah, that Armored Knight I just summoned, he's pretty much dead. Yeah, he just died. I literally just summoned him too. It's so bad. And 
I don't know how to really use the crossbow unit either. It's supposed to have like pierce damage, but it hits as far as the like um, the regular guard range people you start with. But they all line up on the other side of the wall. They don't hide behind the wall like the other range people do, which is kind of unfortunate because they'll just sit there and get murdered. Also, if the enemy has range units as well, they will snipe your range units and murder them. Because the range units, unless you have the buff, have super low health. And that frog dude is awful because he will eat your unit and heal the whole time he's eating them. It is so toxic. Luckily, the berserkers that I have because they're upgraded just kill him. And that was lucky too. I got a slinger dude. Which made the um, stun duration longer on my slingshot people, which was really good, but still didn't even matter. I'm telling you, my RNG on this run was f f impeccable. It, it just was not enough to win. I even got this to buff my Berserk people, basically giving them 100. Some of these events, I don't know what the downside to them is. Like, it gives me the option of not taking the syringe, but why would I not take the syringe? It doesn't even tell you of a downside to taking it. And they become super berserker rats. The best, the best. And I'm sorry if this video is a lot different than my usual videos, but I went back to my old style just because of how this game runs. Where basically, I've already done the playthrough, and I'm recording it in a voice recorder to add to the like game audio. Um, and pretty much talking over it while we're watching the video, which is how I used to do videos back in the day. But then I swapped over to basically talking basically recording as I talked and played the game because it gave more of like a natural reaction to the game but this isn't one of those type of games where I can actually do that because if I did that I'd have like a eight hour long video to edit down and just random parts that wouldn't mesh together right so hopefully it's not too bad but probably not what people are used to if they watch the channel a good bit But see, my guys are life stealing. They're healing for like 160, but still getting murdered by that firebomb. Oh, I wonder if there's like a skill that like rains to get rid of it. It's actually raining right now, but it's not getting rid of the fire and it's killing me. <laughs> it's awful. And th that flood is like one of the worst events that can happen to you. Because either you get five useless cards that you can burn out of your deck, but then it costs 70 gold. Or, um, you lose, like, a certain amount of your population, which is just unfortunate. But honestly, I think if you can find a deck where you can get past the firebomb people you're most likely going to win the game. Like, honestly, if I knew I could have consolidated my forces, I would have run. I know I've said it a couple times, but I would have won it. Um, I think I got the boss to like half, which with like below half my units, to be honest with you, so. Also, something you want to make sure that you can get if possible, there's a thing called the library, I believe. And it makes it where, there's one where it makes it where you can draw more frequently with the space key um, without having a penalty, or you can draw more. And to talk about that, I, I kind of forgot. And that bottom right, you see where you can, uh, that thing that has 520 on it. If you wait for the cooldown, you can hit the space key and draw, like pretty much discard what you have in your hand and draw more cards. You have to do that pretty much the whole time. Um, you don't want to use it f um, while it actually costs gold because then you're just wasting money pretty much until the end of the game where you might just need to mass summon things. 
Sometimes I'll hit the space key on accident, like at the one second mark, which is awful. It is so bad. Because you pay for it and you literally were there anyways. Also, don't use cheese unless you have at least two in your hand. If you have two in your hand, you can make money. But if you only have one cheese, don't use it. Because you'll lose money from using it. Just a heads up. Yeah, and at wave 27, you do get the boss. Too many bosses from each side, which are pretty tough. And at that part, you get this buff, which is like the best buff you can get. Redraw time is really good. If you can get it minus three seconds, that means minus three seconds until you get it for free, pretty much. I wish I wasn't wasting money on those shield people. Because I had armored knights. I didn't know how useless they were until I tried to do a run just with them. Um, I had a run where I was just trying to use them, period. They do not attack fast enough to perma-stun or stun enough or to even do damage. They just pretty much take longer to die. That's pretty much what they're good for from my experience with them. There is a... Um, uh, an advisor that makes your units attack faster they might be good with him if you do get him but I've only seen him once you I've been getting like new advisors like consistently there's a ton in this game for advisors anyways like the cards seem to be about the same like I've seen pretty much all the cards for the military person anyways but like all the cards I've unlocked I've pretty much seen them because you have your Shuffling them so much every playthrough. Library, that's a really good one. That's the one that gives you plus one card every time you do your redraw. So it makes you just like have more cards in your hand at all times. And builders, they can like actually upgrade their buildings to like higher tiers. Um, I believe you can only upgrade it once per building, but it's kind of interesting kind of neat but you actually have to have the ability to do it there is a card that lets you do it called extension but it's like one building so it's not the greatest it's not awful but yeah wave 29 is so hard that by the time you get to wave 30 your people have been thinned out because of the fire And at this point right here, I should have moved all my troops together. Well, actually, I didn't know which way they were coming from yet. I should have probably waited a little bit. But, oh man, so unfortunate. I'm telling you, so frustrating. Because I don't know if I'll ever get that. Well, I will eventually, but I don't know how long it'll be until I get good enough RNG to win it. But yeah, if you beat this, let me know. Like, comment. Oh, wait, I'm not having that 30 yet. One more wave. But yeah, if you beat it, let me know. Let me know your strategies and how you did it. Because this is one of those games where it's always good to learn new stuff. Try different things. See if it works for you. I will let you know, I'm pretty sure it's impossible to use the starting units and win. Like the guard and the... Because they're so squishy and that firebomb. You won't even get to the firebomb, I don't think. Not enough damage. 
Oh wait, this is wave 30. Yeah, so I should have consolidated my units here, but I didn't. Which was a uh, fatal flaw. I actually don't even know if I would have won if I consolidated my units, to be honest with you. But see, here I noticed, but like, I actually do start working them back, but then I figure, like, I don't think I can move them back, so I don't. But you have to move them earlier before they start building your, uh, destroying your defensive forts. Because if you don't have a defensive wall there, you can't move to that area with your units, which is lame. You should be able to defend your main base if there's a defensive wall or not. But, and you do have to mass over the defensive wall to be able to use your unit. But, yeah, this is the end. It's where I lose. But thanks for watching, as always, guys. If you like videos like this, please like and subscribe. And this game was, I'm telling you, it's pretty fun. If you like Slay the Spire, I would recommend getting this. Um, I've been, like I've said, I've played for six hours and I've enjoyed it so much. But, yeah. Bye!